Hey, good morning guys. Welcome back to the channel. Jared at 3C's Recreation. Today we're doing another video. This is on the 2025 Beta 250 Cross Trainer. Our very first one we've ever gotten in. Super windy, so I apologize. Hopefully the mics are doing their job this morning. We won't be catching any of that wind noise. So anyway, brand new Beta 250 Cross Trainer. Behind it, I have the 300. That 300 is the one that we used in our videos like three weeks ago. So that one's already got like four or five miles on it. Um, I have not ridden the 250 yet. I'm gonna mount a GoPro on my chest here in a minute. Not gonna do anything extreme because I gotta sell it, it's brand new. But we can at least, I guess, my thought is like the power delivery must be different. That's why there's two different models because everything else is identical. Same, same everything. It's the bore and the stroke. That's the only difference between these two models. There's nothing else that's different. So I read all the stats again this morning or spec sheets trying to make sure. Um, but if you're watching this and you want to know more about that 250 specifically, let's turn this camera around and let's at least do a full walk around of the 250. So for those of you that are new to the beta world, thanks for coming in, thanks for watching. Hope you consider subscribing to our channel. And uh, let's just give you a full walk around. Like what is a beta cross trainer? Why is it produced? Who makes it? Why? Um, so beta motorcycles is the manufacturer. Why does this model exist? Well, it's like 15% smaller. It's a narrower, skinnier, lighter bike. So if you're entry level, you're getting into the sport, but you don't want um, like, like you don't want to sacrifice quality, right? So like you want the best wheels, you want the best brakes, you want a super solid, capable motor. That's what the cross trainer is all about. You might be new to the sport, but you want to go do the harder trails right away. So that's what the cross trainer is all about. You get the same exact wheels that are found in the full size models. Um, wheel spacers are going to be different from the cross trainer to the standard models. We're going to zoom out a little bit here. So same wheels, same Nissan brakes, same exact system all the way up through, same with the rear. Now these are a 43 millimeter fork, so it's a smaller fork compared to the standard R model. So it's going to be a much softer and more plush ride. That's what this bike is going after. It's going after the first, second, third gear riders kind of learning their way into the sport. They don't need to be, they're not hitting triples, they're not hitting big jumps. This model does come with the coin fan. So for your slower trail rides, coin fan is critical. It's gonna like keep the bike from overheating. You'll notice it kicking on and off. Just gives you that peace of mind, that security knowing that the bike's not gonna overheat. Um, spark plug's easy to get to, well easier from the other side. Oil on a beta two stroke is so easy to change. Um, especially the 250s and the 300s, same exact motor. So fill plug is here, drain bolt is down here. It's a 13 millimeter, extremely easy to get to. Power valve adjuster is here. A lot of adjustment with that. So we can really change how the motor is gonna react to the throttle and RPM range. So when you buy one of these, please play with that. It's a five mil hex head and just screw it out, screw it in and it'll change the delivery of the power. So the higher you rev it. So the further in that that is screwed in, the later the power is gonna come on from the throttle. You have to squeeze the throttle further, RPMs get higher, and then the power is gonna take off. So if you're a newer rider and you want technical slow train power, we're gonna screw that all the way out and you're gonna have more consistent power right from the get-go. Um, swing arm is identical to the standard RR model. So is the complete brake system. So Nissan brakes, same exact brake pads, same rotor, same hub, same wheels as the full size bikes. Um, you do get the brake light tail light in the rear. You do get this solid kickstand. They give you a new, well, they've been doing this for about two years now. This uh, rubber uh, plastic expanded uh, foot pad there. Chain guide, they do give you a premium O-ring chain. So you are not gonna be buying a chain in the first five hours of ownership. You will at least get a year out of it. It's a DID chain, really nice um, lightweight components and it lasts forever. Here's our carburetor and it is oil injected. You can see the oil injection line coming up through. It goes into the bottom over here and then it sneaks into the air box. We'll show that in a minute. This is our choke. We can turn it on, turn it off. So just for reference, it is like 44 degrees out here this morning. It is chilly. So. We will be using choke here in a minute. Um, we have the gas on reserve because I've only got under a gallon of gas. So if we ran this in the on position, we're gonna run out of gas because it is above the, the um, fuel petcock at this point. So we need to be on reserve. Reserve is very tall in these tanks. It always has been for a very long time now. You see the coolant hoses, fuel shut off, spark plug. Shifter, it is a six speed, they didn't change that. Hydraulic clutch slave cylinder going into the motor here. V-force reeds, all high-end components. 
give you a little walk through of the handlebars. So we've got the clutch lever, high beam, low beam, horn, left and right. And then this is our map switch. We have dual maps on this bike. So when I hit the start button here in a minute, it's gonna put an LED underneath whatever side is currently being used. So dry map, wet map, uh, pull some of the power away, add some of the power back, a full display. So um, miles per hour, a clock, uh, you do have a stopwatch, hours, miles, standard display stuff. Kill switch, start button, front brake. Um, it's kind of like a full walk around and I could turn around and do the 350, but it's identical. Identical bike, everything about it is the same. We did say high beam, low beam in the lights. It does come with the horn. I don't know if I can pop the seat off with one hand, but this is how easy they are at times. Might need a second hand to do it. That's brand new, so let me pop this real quick. So when these things are new, it takes a second just to pop the seat. Quick, easy to take off. And here's our battery, very easy to get to. Here's our oil fill, because this is oil injected. Regular gas in here, oil in here. Now keep in mind, this gas does look red because we did pre-mix the first half a gallon, we always do. After, when the customer makes the purchase, they will continue just to fill with a regular fuel and add their oil over here. And then it is super cold out here, so I don't know if these are gonna pop all that easy. Okay, it's super tight, just because it's so cold out. One, two, come on. And here's our air filter. So you could just rock it out, pull it out. Now let's make sure this cage is the same as the 300 cage. Whoa, it's not. This has got a standard air filter cage in it. So the 300s are coming with a pretty choked up air filter cage. I wasn't even gonna pull it. I was just gonna assume it was the same as the 300. So that is the air filter cage. Now I'm curious, we're gonna pull the 300 air filter cage in a minute. Did they go back to the open filter cage or what? So, and what I'm referencing here is the 2024s were clogged up a lot more. ECU, dealer plug-in. So that's pretty much everything under here. So easy to get this stuff. Um, let's go pull the filter cage on that 300 real quick. Okay, this is the 300. Oh, it says right here. Here's the 300. We have a, that's so different. That's so wild. This is what the normal ones come with. This is what the cross trainers come with, is the choke down air filter to kind of smoothen that delivery out. So that's interesting. So they don't talk about that in the book. Did I just get a special one? Did I get one that was supposed to have it? If you guys just bought a 250, leave a comment in the video below and let me know wherever you are in the country, did you get the regular filter cage or not? So let's, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video and warm both these bikes up. Like I said, it's super cold out. Doesn't do me any good to rev it right now. Um, cause they're dead cold. So let me, give me like five minutes. I'll get these bikes warmed up. Okay. Both bikes are warmed up. Radiator is getting hot to a touch or warm. Uh, so keep in mind, these are oil injected plus oil in the gas still. So they're going to be pretty smoky. Um, and the microphones that we use don't really pick up engine noise the best. Like they're good, but they're not great. So, and I'm not going to rev them to the moon. So don't worry. I'm not hurting your bike. Um, this is the 250. I guess my initial thought was the 250s were always a faster revving bike. It was more of a racer bike. Um, 300s were always more torquey, low end. So I'm curious when I drive them up and down the driveway if I feel that, especially with the air filter difference. So I'm not sure that I notice much difference, even in sound, it's crazy. These two sound so close together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw a GoPro on my chest. We're gonna go up and down the driveway. I know it's not like a super cool in the woods type test, but this is the last nice day before 14 days of rain and snow. So we gotta do it this morning. I'm gonna run out of time. Okay, so not sure how much you guys can hear me because I got a helmet on and you guys are on a chest mount this morning. And hopefully the angle's looking pretty good here. So we're gonna ride the 250 first. I'm gonna stay out of the wet grass this morning. Um, I rode the 300 through it earlier. I had to clean the tires already. So hopefully we got a good angle, sun's coming out. I'm gonna warm it up for a second. 
Um, check engine light always comes on, that's normal. It will go out. I'm gonna let it warm up. So we're just gonna do a couple of slow moments here. This is a 250. It's a little wet over there. Like straight down right here. feels super peppy. I thought the 250 was going to be a little more rip. Okay, so I don't know. You can definitely tell the cross trainer motor because it like planes off so much faster. So what I was doing there was like a second gear roll on. Plenty of bottom end, but you could kind of hear the motor kind of like um, not revving out. Like it just kind of stayed. So that, that's the beginner part of this bike because it's not going to get you in trouble. Um, and easier to ride long term for sure. And that's where I think it's taken away from the 250. Is like the 250 is a higher RPM, wants to go... That's the guy that's racing bike, so. I'm gonna do the same thing, let's go slow on this one. These things are tractors, they literally just go up anything. are so easy to ride. I'm gonna do the same second gear roll on. Neither of them are accelerating super hard, but this thing definitely pulled harder. still buy a 300. These things feel so smooth. Like you could ride this all day and not get hurt and have a great time. I don't know. They're so darn close. Like you're just buying a different board and a different stroke with these things. Okay guys, just rode both bikes, uh, not very long, a couple minutes each bike, but long enough for me to know there's not a big difference between the two. I still think the 300 pulls a little bit better. I think that's the bike closer. Yeah, I would probably still buy the 300 if it was me. Um, I don't know, there's not enough difference there, and of course I didn't do a huge test drive. We did the, we did the driveway and a couple of the millions piles, but you're buying the cross trainer for that low end power, and that's what the 300 motor's always been about. 250 has always been my guy that wants to race GNCC, wants to stay in a certain class. He's going to buy the 250, a little peppier, a little snappier. I don't really see that being the cross trainer buyer. I think that 300 motor has been so bulletproof, so luggable. I will continue with that. Um, even with the air filter difference, the cage alone, I didn't notice it. Um, obviously, if we put a full pipe on these bikes, the full FMF, um, they make an FMF 
performance pipe for these. I think that's where the difference would be. Um, thanks for watching. This was Jared at 3C's Recreation. If you found it helpful, please consider subscribing to our channel. Uh, they just announced the beta dealer meeting is going to be in January. And I'm going to go out to it with one of the guys. So stay tuned. I'll surprise you with which one. But we're going to go do all the same ride videos in January. Um, consider subscribing. And we'll see you in the show.